Guys, I want to talk with you about influence today and how to improve your level of influence. Now, when we talk about what it means to be a man, there's a few tenets that I believe lie at the foundation, the root of what we are supposed to be doing. And if you've been with us for any amount of time, you know exactly what I'm about to say. That is to protect, provide, and preside. Preside is synonymous with leadership. Now, in order to protect, provide, and preside, you need to be able to influence other people. Uh, you might be able to get some compliance from people depending on your position of authority and, and the position within a company or your family structure. Uh, your kids, for example, or your employees might comply because they're compelled or obligated to do that. But leading people is about getting them to voluntarily follow you. It has to be voluntary. Otherwise, I don't really believe it's, it's leadership. It might be dictatorship or tyranny, but it isn't voluntary leadership. And in order to persuade people, to influence people, to voluntarily follow you, you actually need to be worthy of, of being followed. Otherwise, people won't. Uh, my friend uh, Brett Bartholomew talks about this. He talks about the difference between compliance and commitment. Compliance is just getting somebody to do something because you have that position of authority. You can get an employee to do that task because the fear of them getting fired or losing losing their job or something like that uh, is what's looming over their head, right? Uh, commitment, on the other hand, is they are extremely bought into the idea of following you because they believe that you can lead them to somewhere that they cannot get to currently on their own. That's what it means to be a leader. And your ability to influence is largely determined by two things. Uh, I'm only going to talk about one today, but I'll tell you what the two are. Number one is leading by example. You have to lead by example. You cannot lead somebody to somewhere that you are not currently uh, yourself or you're not on the path to going in that direction because leadership starts up front. So if you're not up front, you're behind or you're pushing or you're in the middle of the pack somewhere, then you, you aren't leading. Now you might be instructing, you might be guiding, but you're certainly not leading, okay? So for you to lead, you have to be out front, which means that if you're talking with people about improving their uh, physical uh exercise and their physical strength and stamina and conditioning, then you need to be in physical shape. You, you have had to have gone first. Leaders go first. Uh, you have to lead by example. If you want to lead effectively, you have to lead by example. And all of us know that boss, uh, that, that, that coworker, that team leader, the individual, the coach, the mentor, whoever, who we know was completely full of crap. They may have been in that, that position of authority. They may have had the title but they certainly weren't a leader and we complied. But when we talk about compliance, it's just doing the bare minimum to get by, not to get fired or lose your job or get reprimanded. It's the bare minimum. It's not what we're looking for from our people. We're looking for commitment, putting in the maximum amount of effort in order to produce the desired and effective outcome that we and the team is after. Again, whether that team is your family uh, or your business, wherever, wherever it is. Okay. So you need to lead by example. That's number one. Number two, and this is really the root of what I wanted to talk with you about today, is your ability to communicate effectively. I think this is something that is so overlooked uh, and misunderstood and misconstrued. And, and you hear the ideas of the, the, the zero Fs mentality. And if this person doesn't understand what I'm saying, that's their fault, not mine. And yeah, I mean, there's some situations where maybe that's true. But if you're the one communicating a message, and you want to influence or inspire somebody to do something, to engage in some level of behavior, then it is upon you as the leader, as the one communicating the message to ensure that that message is being heard and understood and received in a way that will produce effort that will push them towards the direction that you want to influence that individual to go. Now, yes, they have some level of responsibility in ensuring that they are, are, are capable of, of comprehending that they're looking for nuance and context and understanding what you're trying to say. But guys, as leaders, we can't control what other people are doing. We can only influence and we do that by improving ourselves. When we are more influential, then people are more bound to follow us. So your ability to communicate a message effectively is going to spell the difference between success and failure for your kids, for your wife, for your teammates, your colleagues, your coworkers, whoever it is. And I was, on, uh, I was on Facebook earlier this morning and somebody had made a comment. Now, granted, social media 
is you know not the best place for having healthy dialogue. I, I don't know what it is, but social media just brings out the worst in people. Well, I, you know, I think it has something to do with the the ability for people to be anonymous, right? They can hide behind their keyboards and they don't have to actually have any sort of consequences or ramifications of the things they say. So they just get nasty uh, and, and, and they lose all levels of, of civility. So I had this, this interesting exchange. Uh, I had made a, a new post on, in our Facebook group, which by the way, if you're interested, you can find it facebook.com slash groups slash order of man. And I recorded a video, an introductory video, and just let the guys know what the Facebook group is all about, what we're doing here, what we're trying to accomplish. Here's some of the guidelines and instruction, et cetera, et cetera. And everybody's like, cool, you know, thanks. Appreciate the insight. Thanks for the feedback. And this one guy comes back and he says something to the effect of, you know, well, interesting because all of this stuff is, is regulated through you and I'll probably just get removed just for saying this. And it's, it's, it's very telling when you have an individual communicate that way. Um, this, is, this is an individual who is who's passive aggressive, right? They've obviously got a problem with something, but they either never learned how to address these things assertively uh, or they just aren't interested in having an adult rational conversation. But it's, it's, it's I was going to say it, it's funny. It's not funny. It's disturbing how often I see grown men who are incapable of, of communicating with a healthy, mature, masculine level of assertiveness. So what I wanted to do today is I wanted to break down the four communication styles, talk about the pros and cons of each of these communication styles, and then give you some strategies for how you can move into the most effective communication style, which will ultimately help you feel better about who you are as an individual and help you lead more effectively as the father and the husband and the business owner and the community leader and the type of man that you're showing up or at least have a desire to show up as. And if you undercut yourself at every turn by the way that you communicate and you aren't aware of it, you, you don't know how to be mature in, in the way that you communicate, then you're going to fall into a lot of traps along the way. And you're probably going to wonder why you're not experiencing the results that you're after. Why don't your kids listen to you? Why does your wife not respect you? Why do your teammates uh, or, or subordinates do just the bare minimum to get by? And it's easy to blame them. Oh, you know, my kids, they're just, they're just rowdy and they're out of control and my wife has no discipline for them. And my wife, she just doesn't appreciate me because she doesn't see all the hard work and uh, employees are horrible and they're, just, they're all millennials and they're just trying to do whatever they can do to not have to work. It's easy to go that route. And some of that actually might be true. That's why it's the trap, because we believe that maybe some of that stuff is true and, and maybe it has some validity to it. But how often are you willing to look at yourself and say, hmm, I wonder if the reason my kids don't listen to me is because I'm not worth listening to. I wonder if the reason that my wife doesn't respect what I'm doing is because I'm not communicating effectively what it is I'm doing and how I am actually serving and leading the family. I wonder if the reason my employees don't follow me or at a minimum just do exactly what is necessary to get by and nothing more is because uh, they aren't interested in being led by me as the supervisor or team leader or whatever of, of the organization. Like what if instead of putting the, the burden of responsibility on everybody else and all these external resources and, and, and circumstances – that we can't control, we took it upon our own shoulders and we said, what can I do to fix my ability to communicate effectively? So let's break this down. The first communication style, number one, is aggressiveness. All right, we, we all know the aggressive jerk. He railroads people, he bulldozes people, he's the red personality, he's the quote unquote alpha, right? And anybody that gets in his way or doesn't understand is an idiot and a moron and he just railroads people and he just pile drives them in every opportunity that he can and here's the here's the trap this guy actually gets a lot done the aggressive guy gets a lot done in the short term he can move the team along he can push them along he can he can get them going he can produce the results and what happens is those results get produced immediately and then this guy because of his ego and, and look, I've fallen in this trap before too. But the guy, because of his ego, believes that this is the right way to communicate. 
If I can just be an, a bully and I can just be aggressive and I can just run people over, then people are going to do what they're supposed to do and they're all idiots anyways and I'm the only one who knows how to do this, so I'm just going to keep being aggressive. And what you end up seeing is that in the short term, this individual produces results, but in the long term, nobody likes him. And then they start teammates or employees or family members start to undermine his authority and his credibility. This is where like mutinies take place and people go around the chain of command because you have undermined all trust, authority, and credibility. Yes, you got the short-term result, but in the long term, nobody likes you. Nobody wants to work with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And everybody's going to put forth inferior effort. If you're the aggressive communicator, the trap that you're going to fall into is believing that because it worked in the last week or the last month, that somehow that is the right way to communicate. And I'm just telling you right now, it isn't, it isn't, it isn't, it is an effective way to communicate. It's, it's, it's damaging. It's destructive to the people you care about. And it's destructive to you and the results that you're trying to produce. So that's the first communication style. The second communication style is passive. Now we all, we all know the passive guy too. He's weak. He's timid, he's cowardly, he's pathetic, uh, he lets people railroad him, uh, he, he's overly nice, and please don't misunderstand me because a lot of people do when I say nice, like I'm, I'm not saying it's bad to be nice, okay? But I think there's a difference between being kind and being nice. When I'm talking about being nice, I'm talking about allowing yourself to get railroaded, to get bulldozed, to never voice your opinion, to never uh, have any sort of uh, disagreement or discontent and to let everybody else dictate the tone of the conversations and frankly dictate your life. What a sad way to live. I've been, I've been this guy to some degree. Uh, more generally, I fall into the aggressive by default, but you don't want to be the nice guy. Uh, there's a great book called No More Mr. Nice Guy that you ought to check out. Uh, this is for the passive individual, the guy that allows himself to get railroaded and pushed around and beat up and banged up. And then he wonders why uh, nobody respects him. Nobody trusts him. Nobody listens to him. He doesn't produce the results he wants. He, he doesn't have the life that he's after. And he can't figure out why because, he, oh, he's so nice. Like, I, I don't know why people don't like me. I'm always so nice. Because people, especially those who are looking to be led, aren't looking for nice. They're looking for capable. They're looking for proficient. They're looking for leaders who are going to get the job done, not the nice guy. Like, people just don't want to generally just feel fluffy and nice. They want to get the job done. So you got to be careful of being that passive guy. All right. Now the third communication style is the passive aggressive. The passive aggressive is the jokester. He's the sarcastic one. He's the one who is, is weak. All right. He's, he's weak. He's timid. He's cowardly, but he doesn't want to be that way. And so instead of being passive, he thinks that he's going to manufacture, fabricate some level of aggressiveness and believe that that fake aggressiveness will cloak his weakness. Think about that for a second. The passive aggressive is a weakling. All right. He just thinks that if he communicates in an aggressive tone, that it'll offset his, his timidness, his weakness. And so he's trying to disguise who he really is by taking it to the extreme. These are the guys that have a joke for everything. They can't take anything seriously. They have to laugh and joke and mock and ridicule. If they see something wrong, they can't just come out and say, yeah, I don't agree with that because X, Y, and Z. Here's why. They don't like confrontation because they're weak. Weak people don't like confrontation. Even something that is perceived to be potentially controversial or confrontational. They don't want any of that. So because they're feeling like that, they think that they can ward off by attempting to be overly aggressive. This is a very immature way to communicate. And, and the underlying thread between the three that I already shared with you. So aggressiveness, passiveness, and passive aggressive, the underlying thread is immaturity. These are men who are immature. They, they have never learned how to communicate effectively. Uh, potentially they've never been around an assertive communicator. A lot of the times, even some of these guys, uh, especially the, uh, the passive uh, communicator will interpret the assertive communicator as being aggressive. And also what I've seen is a lot of the passive communicators have spent a lot of time around women. 
they have. They've learned from women. They were raised primarily by their mother and the school system. And so they're passive. Now, I'm not saying women are passive by default, but I'm saying uh, woman, a woman, uh, excuse me, a woman's communication style is less confrontational and argumentative uh, and disagreeable than men. Generally, I know there's exceptions to that, but generally uh, women are less disagreeable, less uh, confrontational than men are naturally. I mean, we, we anecdotally, we understand that scientifically it's even been proven as well. So the guys who, who are one of these three ways, aggressive, uh, or, uh, or passive or passive aggressive, especially if they're passive, generally spend a lot of time around women and they interpret assertive behavior, which is the fourth communication style as being aggressive, as being intimidating, as being scary. And so you'll see it. If a guy, if a, an, a, an assertive communicator brings something up, they'll backpedal, they'll back up. They don't want any confrontation. I've, I've had people that I've worked with who have said things behind my back. And then when I say something directly to them, because I try to be an assertive communicator, oh, no, 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 I didn't say that. And what I meant, and, and they backpedal, right? Because they're, they're afraid of that confrontation. Guys, the point that I'm making here is we need to learn to mature in our level of communication. When we're dealing with people online, uh, when we're dealing with our children or our wife uh, or our colleagues or coworkers or even a boss, and we mature by moving into the next level of communication, which is assertive. This is the way that men communicate. And anything outside of assertive communication is boy-like behavior. It's childish, it's immature, and it is not how men communicate. The way that you be assertive is that you begin to share what's on your mind. You begin to communicate your thoughts. You begin to express your disagreements and your discontent, not in a way that undermines, but in a way that actually helps another individual. This is the power of assertive uh, communication. If you're assertive, it means that you have other people's best interest at heart that you want them to succeed, that you want them to win, that you want to teach them and guide them and instruct and coach and help them get to a place that they could not have imagined going on their own. An assertive communicator is not selfish. If anything, an assertive communicator is selfless. He communicates in a way that is going to be most receptive for the individuals that he's attempting to serve. That's why you communicate that the, way, the way that you do. I want my children to be successful. I know that if I'm going to be passive aggressive with my kids, they're going to resent me. Uh, I'm potentially going to embarrass them or upset them about a situation. And then they're not going to learn or they're going to be conditioned into behavior that isn't conducive to their own results and their own success. If I'm aggressive with them and railroad them and bully them and bulldoze them, they're going to be timid and cowardly and weak like a dog who's been beat. If on the other hand, I'm assertive with them and I show them what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong and how they can improve it. And I do it with a level of empathy and understanding and even kindness and compassion, but also being able to share what needs to be shared, then I'm serving them. I'm giving them the tools and the conversations and the resources they need to improve upon their life. And I don't care if it's your kids or your wife or your colleagues or your coworkers or whoever. So I'm going to challenge you today with some things. I want you to take an inventory of your communication style. And you're not going to turn this into me. You're not going to turn this into anybody else. Maybe talk with, uh, about it with your wife or your kids or the people who are closest with you. Ask them, how do I communicate? In which camp do I most often fall into? Because look, we can all fall into all four. And I'm not saying that I don't fall into being passive or aggressive or even passive aggressive at times. I do. I'm not above that. I haven't completely mastered that. I don't know if I ever will. But I'm conscious about moving into assert assertiveness. So the first challenge I'm going to issue you guys today is to take inventory of your own life and ask yourself, what camp do you fall into most often? Be as objective as possible because nobody's grading this. It's you. Like, you can fool me. You can fool everybody else, but you can't fool yourself. And you certainly can't fool the people who are closest to you. Okay. That's number one. Challenge number one. Challenge number two is I want you to take an inventory with the people who are closest to you. That could be your colleagues or a coworker, your children, maybe a neighbor, a brother, a family member, your wife, and ask them which camp you fall into most often. And don't be defensive, all right? The feedback that you're getting from them is valuable. But if you start to defend yourself and you start to say, no, I don't really do that, you're undermining your efforts. 
Like they're trying to help you. They're trying to serve you and you asked for the help. So don't undermine it when they give you that feedback. Say, thank you for that feedback. Is there anything that I can do to move into this more assertive camp? And by the way, if you undermine them and you make them feel foolish for giving you the feedback that you asked for, then the next time you ask for feedback or a favor or some, some, some guidance, they're not going to give it to you because they don't believe you. You're out of integrity. Okay. Now here's the third, maybe third and fourth challenge. There's a book called the assertiveness workbook. If you know that you fall into one of the three camps I first talked about aggressive that you railroad people passive that you let people railroad you or passive aggressive that you're weak, but you're trying to disguise and cloak it as being strong. Then I would challenge you to pick up a copy of the book, the assertiveness workbook. All right. The assertiveness workbook. I don't think I have it back there. I did at one point, but uh, I think I actually lent my copy to somebody or, 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 or mailed it to him. I can't remember. I don't have it, but I need to get it again. So go through the assertiveness workbook and then there's, there's tasks and there's challenges and things that you need to do in there that will really help and improve you. Um, there's a couple little, little things that you can do, um, that might actually help some other little challenges. Uh, one is asking for a discount on anything that you purchase, asking for a discount. You would be amazed at how much and how quickly that will build your assertiveness. Cause it's scary, right? It's intimidating. You want to do that. And there's all kinds of baggage like, Oh, if I ask for a discount, maybe I'm going to feel uh, or, or they're going to interpret it as me being cheap, right? There's all this mental and emotional baggage that comes into play, but that will help you practice assertiveness, asking for discounts, every opportunity that you can. So that's the first one. The other one that I would give you as, a, as an exercise is saying no to people's requests, not all of them, just things that don't align with you. Saying no to people's requests without offering an explanation. That is very challenging to do because you think you owe somebody an explanation and you don't. If somebody asks you if you can do something and you can't, or frankly, you just don't want to, then simply say, no, I'm not going to be able to do that this weekend or tonight or whatever it is and leave it there. That's going to be very, very difficult at first, but then you'll realize it's not the end of the world. It's not as hard. And you're conditioning your ability to be assertiveness with people, to speak what's on your mind, to share the truth, but to do it in a way that serves you and other people well. I mean, if you, here's one thing, if people ask you for favors and you say yes, but you don't really want to do it, you're either going to do it in a half-assed manner, which is not good, or you're just going to drop the ball and you're not going to do it at all, which undermines your influence, right? Because now you're lying. So you told them you would do something and then you don't show up because you didn't want to do it in the first place, but you were too afraid to say no. And, and now they don't believe you. Like, so what's worse, just saying no in the first place or saying yes, and then letting them down and lying to an individual who's relying upon you guys, this is a much needed lesson. All right. I know that maybe this one isn't as interesting or fascinating as some of the podcasts I've done in the past, but I'm telling you, if you want to lead, you want to inspire and motivate and influence other people. And you should, because that third component of being a man is all about influence and leadership then you're going to need to learn and have to learn how to be more effective in the way that you communicate with other people with a level of kindness and empathy and understanding and at the root of it, a desire to serve those people. You don't serve anybody by being aggressive. You don't serve anybody by being passive. You don't serve anybody by being passive aggressive, but you serve yourself and you serve others by being assertive in the way that you communicate your message, your thoughts, your ideas, uh, and, and the things that you want to share with people. All right, so we're going to sign out with that. Uh, you've got some challenges. Do an inventory on yourself. Have the people closest to you. Do an inventory with you. Pick up a copy of the Assertiveness Workbook and go through those couple of challenges that I issued, which was uh, asking for a discount every opportunity you can. Very challenging, believe it or not. Some may be challenging for, for, more, for some people more than others. Uh, and then also saying no without providing any sort of explanation. But there's other strategies and um, exercises that you'll go through in the assertiveness workbook. I hope that helps guys. If you have questions, comments, thoughts, ideas, concerns, whatever, uh, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, wherever you're doing the social media thing, hit me, hit, hit me an email, join our Facebook group, join the iron council. That's our exclusive brotherhood, which is really, really growing lately. Uh, you can check that out at order of man.com slash iron council. Uh, outside of that, just connect with us on the, on the socials and we'll stay, uh, we'll stay connected and engaged over there. All right, guys, I'm going to sign out. We'll be back next week for our interview series, but until then go out there, take action and become the man you are meant to be.